Hi everybody, <clears throat> my name is Scott Cam Schaefer and I'm a clinical social worker here in Austin, Texas. And um, I wanted to talk to you all today, today uh, in light of the recent uh, Centers for Disease Control updates on the uh, national suicide rate. And um, so I wanted to talk to you about uh, how to deal with and cope with uh, suicide and suicidal ideation, suicidal feelings in yourself. Uh, so if you're not aware of it, <clears throat> the most recent CDC data uh, came out and said that the suicide rate continues to climb as it has done for about the last you know, 16 to 17 years. And it's part of an alarming trend that is something that is unacceptable in our country as much as we have know-how for helping people through uh, terrible uh, serious accidents that have happened to them serious diseases uh, some of the diseases that still remain the most troubling are ones that are related to suicide such as depression bipolar disorder uh, drug addiction uh, drug and alcohol addiction uh, so one of the main things that needs to happen is that if you're dealing with one of these disorders, it needs to get treated somehow. But that all relies on you if you are a, someone who suffers from uh, suicidal feelings or suicidal thoughts to be willing to, to talk to someone. And that's probably the first thing that needs to happen if you're somebody who struggles with uh, suicidal thoughts or feelings or ideations. Uh, so um, that's my chief number one clinical advice to anybody who uh, suffers from uh, suicidal thoughts or feelings. Be willing to talk to someone. And if you talk to someone, then you'll be able to kind of get an idea of either how serious the situation is or that um, you know, there's another point of view that doesn't necessarily match your own. And the fact, it doesn't matter whether you agree with who it is you talk to or not, or whether they agree with you, you get a, a sounding board of someone who has at least a little bit more objectivity of your situation than you do. And as I probably said before, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary set of problems. And although they may seem very serious and very dire, they are temporary. And suicide is a permanent solution and none of us knows what happens beyond the grave we may have our particular beliefs and faith that somehow informs us but nobody really knows what happens when we die for sure and it's a big gamble to think that you know somehow things are going to be better when I'm dead than when I'm alive because there's no coming back uh, once that decision has been made and what that once that action has been taken and the successful suicide has been completed um, the second thing that everybody who has suicidal thoughts and feelings needs to, needs to have is a plan. And that plan is not a plan to commit suicide, although that's probably part of the thought process. But it's a plan to deal with the suicidal thoughts and feelings when they happen. And that can involve calling someone. It can involve calling a crisis hotline or the National Suicide Hotline, which I will you know, post in my blog post that's associated with this. Uh, any other series of steps that helps take the person, you in particular, out of a suicidal form, form of thinking and feeling to uh, a, a situation of safety. And it could literally be going to somebody's house where you feel safe or some place where you feel safe. But whatever it is, it's not going to allow you to continue to have those thoughts and feelings without some sort of... Um, helpful interruption of that cycle because that's what you've had too much of already and you don't need any more of that. You need some relief from the suicidal thoughts and feelings and it's not in taking your own life because again that's the permanent solution to the temporary set of problems that you as someone who's having those thoughts and feelings is dealing with. And then the third thing to, uh, to help cope with suicidal thoughts and feelings is to get get into some therapy, get into psychotherapy with a clinical social worker like myself or an LPC or a PhD clinician or uh, some other psychologist uh, who can help you to look at your uh, thinking 
and feeling and find ways to break out of that cycle because having suicidal thoughts and feelings is a terrible burden to have although the set of problems that may go with them may seem like it's even worse um, you know most of the times people who have suicidal thoughts and feelings are dealing with a tremendous degree of emotional pain which one uh, um, person who's or a clinician who studied suicide called psychic and or uh, people are dealing with tremendous degrees of self-hate and if you're dealing with either one or both of those that's not something that anybody is meant to cope with on their own and you know for example if you're dealing with self-hate you know the the, that's going to tend to show up in thoughts of killing or hurting yourself. But that's kind of like, if you take action on it, it's kind of like becoming your own voodoo doll. And, you know, people aren't meant to be their own voodoo dolls. And um, even if somebody practices that, that form of whatever you call it, it's not a, a, it's not a therapeutic thing, especially in, uh, in America. Maybe in certain cultures that might be considered healthier or good way to deal with people's problems, but especially if you become your own uh, whipping post, then something is really wrong in that situation. And along with getting therapy help, a lot of times people need to get uh, to, to look at uh, going to a psychiatrist and getting medication to help treat an underlying mood disorder, whether it's depression or bipolar disorder. Um, those are clinical um, psychiatric illnesses and those need to be treated a lot of the times with psychiatric medications and if you go to a psychiatrist and get evaluated for medications chances are you're going to get something that's going to be better than what you've been uh, working with up to this point which if it's just the confines of your own mind and all the suicidal thoughts that are going on in there that's not going to be helpful so whatever you do, I encourage you to, in some way, shape, or form, follow these three steps and suggestions to help deal with uh, suicidal thoughts and feelings if these are the ones that you're having. You know, we live in such uh, a society that's educated and is um, so good at solving problems, and yet if we continue to struggle with the problem of suicide in our society, we're, we're falling behind, uh, behind a lot of other cultures that really are not as blessed as ours is. So if I can be of help and you live in the Austin, Texas area, give me a call. If you're somewhere else, uh, call somebody else that you can find on the internet or through friends. But please do reach out to someone and get the help that you need because suicide is something that's, um, it's, it's not a, a positive result for practically everybody's life. and. Um, if you start thinking that it is, that's the time to go ahead and be talking to somebody and somebody who can give you some honest feedback about it, even if it's not the kind that you like to hear. So I appreciate everybody listening and uh, watching, and uh, I wish you all the best of mental health and take care and, um, um, and be well.